kind of a... Hello! Testing. One. Hello. Looks like my mic's working. Guys, say stuff. Hello! Ba, 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 boo, boo. Stuff, stuff. Ba, ba, stuff. Boo, boo. I, got, 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 I am boo. here. Bob, I am here. Um, yeah. Oh, I still need to watch that new episode, actually. I know, I'm yeah. trying to get... Uh, I've watched... I'm trying to finish up the most recent season before I start on the new one, but... Yeah. Lot, That's typically but... the order, yeah. I, nope, Travis, I'll... Um, <laughs> Travis, I'll punch you in the mouth. Actually, I'm Did vaccinated. You know? I'm vaccinated now. I'll kiss you on the mouth. Oh. Oh. And then like a, what? Like a tongue punch. <laughs> and then what? Oh, we're off to a good start. Anyway, um, hello everyone. Um, no new announcements. Um, keep checking out my uh, uh rotating announcement thing for more. Check out my panels for updates. New shadows over Drift Chapel this week. Um, um, I should theoretically hopefully i should have a new um adventure module coming out by the end of the week and i've also been brought on as an encounter writer for a new project for another project um and it's like a horror supplement so i'm gonna be flexing those muscles again um so we'll see i might test play a an encounter or something for shadows over drift chapel uh but yeah so i got a lot of stuff working on um i should be doing hopefully a new let's make stream uh last one was encounters i came up with an interesting one um and i realized as i was pre prepping for it that encounters i have a lot of opinions on different types of encounters so i might have to narrow it down next time um so we'll see we'll see everyone good what i just heard a crashing sound oh it's someone's getting rid of a uh, my so the dumpster is right outside my window and that's what that is <laughs> Someone's just throwing things away. Well, someone's. Oh, it yeah. sounds like a lot of glass. Those probably probably had a good weekend. It's recycling. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Um. Anyway. Uh... It's a recycling. <laughs> <laughs> um. <it's... laughs> just read yourself. Um. So. Uh. That's all for me. Um. Ooh. Xavier, what you got cooking? You got some cool stuff going on. Uh. Yeah. So tomorrow I'm going to be streaming. I am on day two of Disco Elysium. I'm also planning on doing some more build streams in Tellspire, which is a new program that came out that lets you um, make D and D worlds uh, in like a 3D environment. I tested oh, it out the other I day. Saw that. Yeah, I tested it out the other day and I had a fun time. We built like a little tavern and like a little enchanted forest. That's right. I'm going to continue doing that. But yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, I have to catch that one. Um, cool stuff, cool stuff. Um, I think with that, I think it's the fastest we've ever started and made it to the end and getting ready to start. It took like three minutes. I don't want to say it, but Alan isn't here. Yes, we are a body oh, yeah. short this time, but it is okay because I feel as though where we left off will um, uh, take up a large chunk of our time, depending we will see we will see um so for starters for starters for starters let's do an rp warm-up um i feel like naturally it has to be oleg but uh well i'll spare this one um unless travis really wants to do one before he has an entire session basically devoted to him i'm good <laughs> um let me uh, cross out Alan's name there. Uh, I'm going to roll a d4, and that person will roll a d20, and then we'll decide uh, what you're doing, what you're talking about. Um, d4, that's Jacob. So, Donovan, roll a d20 for me. <laughs> you got to sit. You got to pay attention. You got to shit? Uh, 19. Ooh. Big numbers, big numbers. <laughs> uh, of course, pick a real song. But what song would Donovan sing at karaoke night? Uh, uh, I think the obvious answer is, uh, if anybody's ever played the Yakuza games, it would be, uh, Baka Mitai. Like that meme song. Because one, that song is a, that song slaps. And two, it's, it's relevant to him. It's good. <laughs> Fully no point of reference on that one, but I Same. trust. But I, I trust. yeah. Yeah. It fits, probably. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's... Give us a little excerpt from it? No. Uh... There's a manual it, it, tool called YouTube, YouTube. or yeah. 
that gives uh, you movement. It's a it's a it's a good song. <laughs> oh, I'm a, it's it's essentially just like a a Japanese uh, a song in Japanese about uh, like uh, being sad and uh, not or er, lost love that kind of stuff. And it's it's one of the it's in every one of the Yakuza games, and there's it's it's a very it's a meme song. You've probably seen memes with it. Uh, but yeah, nice. Okay, so, um, you okay there? <laughs> yeah, it's got to clear your throat sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> um, so last <laughs> Xavier just had this dead look off to the side and then just kept cutting his eyes over and looking at his webcam. <laughs> it's cracking me why you, up. Why are you calling him out like that? Because it was too funny. It was cracking me up. Um, so, last time, uh, we beat up some racist nationalist veterans from the last war. Um, two of them, sur three of them survived, I think. One of them in deadly critical condition. No, four of them survived because uh, he one was wanting to die and kept fighting back <laughs> until he was just knocked unconscious. Uh, one of you, one of them was spared. Two of them escaped. So, killed some races, beat up pretty badly the others. Um, by beat up, I mean set most of them on fire multiple times, um, yeah. which yeah, I never I, thought that would be the party's like signature thing, but <laughs> pretty much all set them on fire in one way or the other. Um, uh, you went back upstairs and unveiled your new master plan of how you're going to uh, stage Varian, an attack on Varian's life, stage all sorts of deaths and attacks at Morgrave University. Um, and then uh, you went home for a well-deserved rest. Right, guys? You went to bed. Yeah, yeah, I think that's where we left off. Um, we all laid I our sure heads did. down upon our soft little pillows and uh, drifted off to Betty Bye. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Radiant Lucia? Uh, Lucia. Um, Whoa. So, uh, in fact, that's not what happened. Oleg had a different idea, wanted to bring his good old buds to go evict a bunch of squatters out of his estate. <laughs> 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 However, upon arriving at his <laughs> estate, all of these squatters and uh, some of his servants as well, uh, people who keep the lawn and keep the kitchens and things like that, we're all wearing matching black baggy robes. Uh, they escorted him and Spike and Varian uh, across the yard uh, into the halls. And they just kept saying, you know, you have a guest. I uh, can't wait for you to uh, meet them. Tea's ready. Tea's hot. Um, and you were escorted into the dining hall. Uh, of Manticore Estate, which I have a map of that I plucked from the internet, uh, and I will send to you guys, Ooh. so you have a visual reference. Um, so, uh, the table is set, uh, plenty of food, drinks, and tea set along the large dining table of Manticore Estate, servants wearing their black robes, and of course, as Oleg now knows, not friends, not servants, not associates, but people he is familiar with for some reason. Uh, are scattered around, tending to things, dishing out food, pouring drinks, um, while at the far end, at the head of the table in front of the roaring fireplace, is what Oleg knows uh, from a very traumatic memory from his young life, and what Varian knows probably from arduous study as a mind flayer at the far head of the table, and greeted Oleg, happy to see him again. Um, so first things first, um, I'll do in the art rest chat of our discord, I'll send a little thingamabob. Um, do -do -do. Nope. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. Do -do um, and there are some tokens on there that you will see likely, or no, not on this one. Um, I have tokens for my own reference if things go badly. Oh, that's what that was for. Cool. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's a very long haul. Um, and uh, you guys, uh, assuming that this is, you know, north being up, south down, uh, you're on the south side of the hall, and you're looking at the north side in the head of the table where the mind flare is in front of the fireplace. So, 
Um, you are welcomed in. The Mind Flayer greets you. Um, he mentions uh, he was happy to see you again, Oleg, but uh, he catches himself uh, before he goes on to say, uh, lovely to meet you, Spike and Vic. Sorry, um, my name is Otoza. Oleg, it has been some time since you've seen me. <clears throat> Tentacles over his face, and Oleg, you realize you are hearing this in deep speech, and you're understanding every word of it. Um, but to the others, he's speaking in common, albeit a bit gargled and rough around the edges. I I know a lot about all of you, and I'm glad to finally make a formal acquaintance. Please, you've had a wrong, long evening. Take a seat, take a seat, grab some tea, grab a snack. And he sits back down. I grab some tea. Um, <laughs> uh, and I guess I uh, sit down and I say, um, so it has been a while, or why are you here? Right. I'm just frozen and it have been for the past like 15, 20 seconds just darting my eyes back and forth between Spike and Oleg just... yeah and Oleg by the way Oleg definitely is very cautious uh, unnervingly like uh, tight around his shoulders and he's just kind of he has his hand near his gun, but he's trying to seem loose, but it's not really working too well. It's kind of one of those things where you're, like, about to present in front of the class or in front of a boss, and you're kind of, yeah. like... Uh, Fidgeting, like, I... Yeah, I, I you know, it's supposed your to gun. be super loose here, but, uh... What do I do with my hands? Yeah. Um, uh, but, um, does everyone grab a snack, tea, and take a seat? I think I'll skip on the snacks. Um, can't really taste much of anything. Uh, the tea's not necessary either. I, I think I'm just gonna, I'll be fine. Just sitting at the door, just kind of uh, watching. Did you bring anything to my home for uh, for Spike? Oh, it, it's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. You don't. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't need anything. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, I, was, I was just curious how hospi like, hospitable he was in my own home, you know? Well, I did bring something for your friends. Oh, what did you, what did you bring? Uh, he reaches into sort of his black armored cloak, his, like, these long tendril-like fingers, and pulls them out into a fist, and he unrolls his hand, and you see these two worm-like parasites crawling across his hand. Oh, yes, I... Uh, I think we're good. I don't really know if there's any point in giving them uh, worms. That's I, they don't really eat that. Oh, it's um, I, it's not for eating, Oleg. Earworms, just like yours. Have I known about earworms? I don't. I think I have heard about it, but uh, didn't. Didn't we encounter them at the gala at the Dale Care exhibit? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we did. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, I'll say uh, this. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, you know, he says, "Oh, you don't remember? Uh, sorry, I lose track sometimes." Um, uh, and he does this weird, like, uh, puckering almost with his like uh, spindly fingers. Uh, and he does this strange, almost like twisting motion, like he's turning a dial and rubbing them together. And you feel this like electric shock behind your ear, Oleg. And you immediately have this memory of standing in front of a mind flare, probably much shorter than you are now. But you recognize the same mind flare as he's unraveling his hand, holding out a tiny parasite and almost magic trick esque, rubbing his fingers behind your ear and then it disappears. All right, this is very cool. Why should they? Adult, why are you here? Why are you giving them anything? Oh, it's as you know. Um, 
We've been keeping our distance from you, letting you do your work, and I think now it is time to get involved, to recruit your help in person from the Overmind. Right. Uh, why? You have been... Uh, devoted to Dale Keir magic. You've shown great respect and honor for the kind of magic we wield, and we want to give you the opportunity for more of it. I am respectfully listening. Um, this sounds... Fantastic. You see Oleg actually get loose a little bit more. Uh, and he, <laughs> he kind of sits back and drinks his tea a little bit and he goes, I I do like where this is coming. However, uh, I mean, look, I, I don't really love the people staying at my home. Don't they have their own lives? And also, why should we, they have the earworms? Right? It's, it's for me. It's fine. All the people here are for you and us to use. Um, uh, he brings up his tendrils and tentacles again at it, like these fingers. Um, he says, um, Oleg, uh, request a drink or a snack without saying anything. Just think it. Say you want um, a beer. And I request uh, a beer. Uh... And within moments, one of the servants uh, that you don't see in the room appear from a nearby chamber uh, with carrying a cask on their shoulder, a uh, spigot in it, and essentially pours you a fresh mug of beer. And he was like, then he says, all right, now request anything without saying it. I will request them leave my house. And all of these servants start to gather up at the front door, putting on their jackets and shoes, and start to leave. He says, see, they're all for you, and will obey any command of yours. This is fantastic. What if my command is to uh, maybe, uh, like, live their own lives? Maybe, like, uh, maybe if I, like, I don't, I, uh, yeah, maybe if, uh, I mean, I, I love the power. It's, it's wonderful. Especially, this would be great for the case I'm working right now, obviously. Um, but, I mean, uh, I don't like people living in my home, and uh, and to some extent, they have their own lives, right? I don't... Yes, and of course, and I, I, more of a demonstration. They don't have to stay here. Uh, just figured they would help out a little bit. Um, uh, but, rather than command you to do anything, I would prefer to ask you. You see, you've accepted gifts from the Overmind thus far, and I would like to continue giving those gifts, and so would he. But, due to some old wards and old magics in the city, he cannot. He cannot fully manifest and reach his domain here through the variety of magical caverns and tunnels that lead their way to Sharn. You could destroy those old wards. We could start a new world order in Sharn. Delkir could roam free. You could have your pick of Delkir magic. You could lead it. Mm -hmm. yes. Could overthrow that family that turned you away for your love of Delkir. <sighs> I'm starting to get a little bit closer to that family, though. I, I don't know if it's necessary to overthrow them. I don't. Why? What would you do when you get here? Is it just? A little bit confusing your uh, your motives. 
Is it just to control? We have, um, let's say similar motives to you. We like to see what magic can do and see what we can make with it. Um, save it for later. So, we like to create things, sometimes living things out of magic. And having all the resources that Sharn has to offer could be beneficial. Um, living things. Um, are you speaking about... Uh, do you know about my recent activity? I guess that's another question. Yes, the nasty business with uh, all the murders and things, but um, your friend Gav, was it? The yes. Doppelganger. Yes. Uh, yeah. I never knew that Doppelganger personally, but uh, he's a Dale Kier being. Creation. Okay. And uh, you... Are you connected to all of the earworms uh, that are out there? I, I noticed that Gav and, uh, and his friend were both very... Uh, they seem to have a little bit of connection to the over uh, Overmind through the earworm. Um, if they still do, it might be more residual. They, if, they seem to have carved their own path, but there are doppelgangers out there that's still connected. Hmm. So, I'm struggling a bit as to why, well, one, I don't really like the idea of you being able to force me to do anything. That's not as fortunate. Um, so you're here to what? You're here to ask me, tell me, to go deal with these protections around the city so that you can take it over. Take it over, provide you with as many resources and magics that you so need. And let's say happy Tediki. I I don't you know uh, I like a beneficial a two-way relationship, of course, but I'm... Hmm. I'm struggling to see why Spike and Varian need these gifts, right? They could just not instead, and maybe... What if I say no? What if I say I don't want to kill my family, uh, or have my family be enslaved by, uh, by you, right? Uh, you and I have a beneficial relationship, but... Uh, it's not always the case, I feel like, with what you are talking about. Well, um, of course, as uh, a, a favored inventor of the Delkir, you will have your own pick of who and who is not uh, under control. Uh, I figured that uh, if our gift has been so our gifts have been so beneficial to you, it could benefit your friends and family as well. Hmm. But doesn't that ultimately mean that you just want to be able to control a little bit more? Like, you're, you're giving gifts, sure, but I don't know. Uh, I don't... I don't like this arrangement. It doesn't... it doesn't feel good. Right? I, and I'm sure you knew this would not feel great. I, I love magic. I love being able to test out inventions. But... Asking me to take down the whole city by destroying its protections feels I mean could you not just have your own ward I mean the other other there's the border Maria clan who has their own little pff, little thing you don't have to have all of it right oh 
problem is, is that most don't like Delkir and those who treat it like you do. So it yeah. seems that might be an only option. I don't, I don't know. People don't like anything, really. I mean, <laughs> people don't. I don't feel like you're any special, any more special than anything else, right? I, I'm parading with your magics around. I have this uh, gym thing. I have the tentacles and the beard. I have this little eye thing. You know, like people look at me weird, but ultimately people just want to get from point A to point B without being killed, you know? So what is your uh, proposition then? I, uh, why don't you take over like a, a ward, right? We talk about maybe destroying the protection of a particular ward. We have you like live in a place. I don't know. Uh, we could uh, honestly just choose a place that seems very meh, right? I mean, like, do you really need? Do you really need anything extravagant? I don't know, man. Like, you've lived. You live to places that are much worse than uh, than anywhere else, right? So, like, uh, we could carve out a part of the city and say this is your your home base. <laughs> like a Dale Keir gentrification. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could live everywhere if you wanted to, but uh, taking over everything just seems a little <laughs> ambitious. Yes, I mean. Um... Like I'm. No. <laughs> ambitious. Ambitious, yes. I don't, I don't know. Like, uh, I would like for dwarves and Dale Keir to be able to uh, trade inventions, but the idea that you're going to just take over people and not give them a chance to invent on their own, then it seems like you're taking away from the whole society or uh, science, right? Like, uh, if everybody's inventing the same kind of technology, it's kind of there. At this point, uh, he stands up and paces over to the uh, fireplace. While you make good points, I think previous uh, wars and Battles have shown that most societies don't get along with the Delk here. You are letting the past take the future? More letting cosmic designations decide. So we're letting we're letting the stars determine something that science can choose otherwise you're letting your feelings get in the way just because something has always been doesn't need to be how it is there's goblins and orcs and other types of people who uh, are definitely not always the most sightful I'm sure but I we live beside them I'm sure there has been wars before that we have uh, persevered through. Oleg, well, like, go and make a persuasion check for me. Absolutely nothing, man. <laughs> there, there's not a single thing that can help me with this roll. Alright, here we go. A natural 20. Ah! A plus one. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Um, Holy shit. He turns around. Uh, and you hear a bit of like a 
high-pitched whistling in your ear. Um, and one of the uh, servants races back in. Um, you recognize this as one of your uh, like actual servants that worked with you, not just one of the random cultists who are invited in. Um, He looks up and uh, looks at you, Oleg. Kind of looks at Spike and Varian briefly and says, You make good points, but... I've been seeing how the people of Sharn have been treating each other. I don't necessarily see a future of Delkir living beside such creatures but we will consider this I think only true growth true evolution beyond your paltry states and societies can be achieved with the guidance of the overmind So, leave you with that. You should now be able to communicate with me if you need. But again, consider. And uh, how are you able to get here? If there is protection, right? Is it just a protection against the overmind, or like how are you able to get inside it's just the overmind from being able to fully manifest here mostly connecting his domain here i have a bit of magics mm -hmm. you know in theory part of the reasons i mean like i don't know the true i don't know all the history but Part of the reasons I can only assume why there were wars in the first place is because you come into a place and immediately start talking about taking over everything. We can, I mean, of course you're going to think about the, the wars and the killing and it is all terrible, but I feel like we could have had a conversation about possibly talking to using my position to talk about talk to the people in the council about other things right uh, other possibilities but instead you come into my home and you talk about taking over everything and it sets the wrong tone you know <laughs> I, I think that That's we could have wrong tone i think we could have had a little bit different of a conversation. But I, I do understand. You you have a plan that you have already talked up. I'm sure the Overmind and everybody else has thought a long time about this. And another plan is harder to come by. How how do I how do I help you feel secure with my idea? First, I say, do a little more research on the various conflicts between uh, wars of Maror Hold and the Delkir, the goblins of Dakan and the Delkir, and see that it wasn't necessarily the Dale Keir, who fired first. Okay. And see if that changes your mind. If not, we'll talk further. Deal. And he holds out his long, spindly hand. Uh, sure, but what else? Right. Uh, th if I give you research, you're not asking, you're not seeing if there's anything that you can do, right? Because you're just asking me to research uh, history. 
what else can I do to further my particular position? Are you just saying just me research your position? Bring it back to your people. Just see what they think about possibly living beside. I could be a liaison if that's necessary. I will let them know and will let you know accordingly. Sure. That's all I ask. Okay. So are you getting them out of the house now? And also, can we have these other people to have their own lives? Is that possible? Of course. And if you need them, yeah, you can I'll reach them. them. Yeah. And, um, if things get complicated, I could also teach you some methods of changing them for your benefit. Changing? What do you... Uh, I'm sorry. What do you mean by changing them? Something stronger, better. Not bound by their normal mortal forms. Given a new so one. You can turn people through these earworms into other things? Yes. I'm confused as to why you haven't done that to me yet. I, I know we're, we're, I was just showing you out the door, but I'm confused. Like, there's this thing here, right? Like... I mean, of course, I'm being helpful over at this, but, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know where we're at at this point. I don't understand why you've given me so much choice. Well, don't dismiss your helpfulness. You've been helpful for a very long time. Helpful? Yes. I'm sorry, how? Well, before you, the Overmind didn't have much of a presence in Sharn. Uh, the uh, other Delkir lords and leadership had their own groups here, and they kept the Overmind away. And alongside those old magical wards within the lo lower city never really had much of a chance, but you gave us a chance. Are there other... You said there's other lords, then? Yes, there are. Uh, and are they have much more of a presence than the Overmind, or are you saying that the Overmind's the closest to being able to... You'd be surprised. I mean, that's why I'm asking, yes. I am trying not to be surprised. Uh, if I recall, there is a fanatical group called the Eyes, or the Seeing Eye, the something of that effect. Um, they've been at work a long time in this city, and from what we've gleamed, they're led by some beholder entity, and uh, they all claim to be able to see the future, and see, uh, see things that no one else can see, and other okay. so, alongside them uh, I think there are various lycanthrope who live among the shifter communities from what we've seen and even though they're not strongly Delkir any longer they are still Delkir and tend to rebuke any powerful sources mm -hmm. interesting and, I mean, these still seem relatively small per, like, strength, right? Like, these people kind of live in society with uh, other people. Lycanthropes do, I guess. They're kind of blending in. Uh, blending in doesn't necessarily mean freedom to act and do what they will. That's true. In the eyes, you say, are they... They're just a fanatical group. They're not really... It doesn't seem like they're doing too terribly much, are they? Oh, that I don't know. I assume they are. 
And what happens if the Overmind gets control of the city? Are you going to kick out these other groups? Um... Depends, I guess, if the Overmind and Belshir are in, on good terms at that point. Belshir, is that the Eyes people? Yes, and I believe you may have seen some of her artifacts whenever you're at the um, museum. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it was very curious how they got so much uh, control over all those artifacts, or how they got all those artifacts. Probably some talented mercenaries. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh... Uh, well... Thank you for coming here. Uh, I guess I I am. It's nice to see you. It is. But do you have somewhere you stay? Uh, I will be heading back to the Overmind's domain. The Overmind's domain. Is it just another realm? Is that uh, what you is could you could say that? Yes. I could say that. You could I say don't that. like. I don't like that phrase. What does that mean? Do you? Uh, turns his hand again, a jolt behind your ear, and you recall that the mine you had gone down in, uh, the reason you stumbled into Mind Flare and Delkir Magic was because it opened up into a larger tunnel system. Mm -hmm. And it extended farther and farther, and eventually the mine was just closed off out of essentially fear of going too deep. Um, and uh, he says, it's sort of, uh, it's almost like an underground realm that's only accessible through magical tunnels. And these tunnels are connected underneath the city, I'm guessing? Typically, settlements and things like that, uh, we, these tunnels end up at, but we've never been able to connect his domain to Sean because of these this old magic. Wait, so okay, so question about the, all right, continued question. I'm sorry, I keep on telling you to leave my house, and it's a, I don't know it's quite a roller coaster, but um, I, again, <laughs> what is your desire? What did what? So you want? So ultimate desire would be to be able to control people, blah blah blah. But if you didn't have to do that, is this like? live in just a house you want to live into a home live beside people live by yourselves like what is what is your like you if you want to control people right and you want things to be served hand and foot i guess but like what other things do you want what do you actually want essentially try to make the mortal creatures in the universe, the best that they can be, the best forms of themselves. Okay, but like, no. What about like anything else? What else? Because I mean, like, you're saying you want to change them to be the best they can be, but like, what if this is the best they can be? Like you can, you can see it. You you should be able to see it. That it doesn't just stop here. I and gestures towards Spite and says, "Look how much your friend was improved by implanting this weapon into his own arm. Look how much your friend Varian was improved by helping rebuild his nerve system using Delkir magic. There's always room for improvement." But that kind of magic can happen elsewhere, right? Like. We have human magic, or whatever kind of magic, arcane magic that can grow back limbs normally. We have a, uh, I have mending that can, in some sense, restitch together his arm, and I can, I can build it another arm for him. It's not like I need to deal here magic to do that. You're saying improve? I mean, uh, what if it's a tangential proof? Like it's the uh, same thing, right? Same, same, but different. 
<laughs> same, same, but different. <laughs> I mean, he's bringing up some good points. So I, I know I haven't been saying much, but I mean, he is bringing up some good points. <laughs> Says, but as as we've seen, those things have many costs, money, gems, costly resources. Elkir can be harvested from almost anything. Harvested from almost anything. So you're bringing universal healthcare? Uh, yeah, in a way, yeah. I'm yes, that's a good way of putting it. Well, you should have started with that one. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> it's really, it's really seem like something you should put on a, a card, right? Like maybe we could put that on the next voting session. <laughs> no free will, universal healthcare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no debts versus free. I mean, like, uh, no, I'm. Hey, kid, but hey, okay. I mean, okay, so you just want to improve them to where they could be. That's all you want. That's it. Yes, just out of the kindness of your hearts, out of the kindness of making our world the best it can be make it the best in the eyes of the gods make it the best in all the whatever cosmic entities people wish to believe and you've talked to these gods they they say yeah turn these people into delkir masterpieces can't necessarily talk to gods so i mean i'm confused besides the, the open mind oh over my god, okay. I haven't really. I mean, I know these. Okay, interesting. I'm. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, um. You haven't talked to gods, but you say that uh, best version of themselves in the eyes of gods. Uh, I don't. I mean. Hmm. Doesn't sound very convincing to me. Let's uh, here. Let's take a different avenue. Okay. Yeah. You tend to get <sighs> annoyed when people don't comply to your wishes. You tend to, um, if someone is weaker than you, you don't shy away from holding that over them. I think you can agree there are lots of weaknesses in Sharn. Weak people, weak communities. Delkir can help get rid of those weaknesses. Survival of the fittest, as it were. And bolster the society as a whole. No more worried about people uh, stealing your sky coach or cutting your coin purse from your hip. Much higher aspirations than that. Hmm. Aspirations? They would have aspirations still? Of course. It just won't be putting coin in their pocket or worrying about what they're going to be eating, but it'll be worrying about what amazing creation they'll be able to devise and how powerful they can become the next day. I mean, do Dilkir never calls... Like, they never fight wars against each other and never steal from each other. They never have any kind of problems within each other. There's no weaknesses. I mean, people kill Dilkir, so there must be some kind of weaknesses. Yeah, what are your weaknesses? Uh, weaknesses are the things that we let get away. Sometimes our own inventions get lost or get... They make escape. And that has earned us a 
bad reputation. Wait, so your weaknesses are to lose things. That's not good on the resume. Sometimes our creations are more intelligent than we'd like, and... find ways to escape us. Okay, so two intelligent uh, creations. Um, okay, but what about the rest of the stuff, right? So you never, you never, you'll never have crimes within the Delkia community. You never have any of that kind of stuff. You're perfect. Yes. Can I just... check that? Yeah, go for it. Make an insight check. Oh, I know. Oh, I roll a, a two, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, he says, um, if we control the evolution of mortal species and can improve them, then there's no faults to be had. You can make, we can make a perfect society. Okay, but what about, like, you just said earlier that the Ubermind and the, like, other guy, other woman, Belshira? Belashira. Belashira. Um, you said that the two of them, uh, if they're on good terms, right? So there has to be some kind of conflict there. Oh, on occasion, it mostly comes down to the followers. Most of the time, these... Again, these mortal followers of the Delkir Lords, they don't get along with others, and so they might start wars within themselves, causing a bit of conflict, but it's usually not the fault of the Lords themselves. Hmm. Okay. Well, I look into this, right? I look into the history. Because it, it's interesting to me that you... Uh, the best version of self is a very interesting concept. I... I'm really curious as to who can determine that. I don't know, but it, it is very interesting. I I would like to look more into your history, and of course, at some point, if you'd like to sit down for some tea and talk about it, whenever it's not so late at night. Uh, um, <laughs> maybe. And maybe whenever I invite you, instead of just coming into my home. But uh, I think both these conditions met, I think that it'd be great to I would love to heal more. Right. We'll think on it. And uh, good luck with your investigation. Yeah, you got any tips or anything? You you have y'all have eyes everywhere. Do we have any what? Huh? Tips. Tips. Any any kind of I don't know, hints? Any help as to how we should handle this? You got any connection to her? You know oh, who she is? Her, no, but we can. Um, give her a parasite and we can do something oh, about so it. I still, have to, I still have to see her first. Yes. Wait, do you have an extra parasite I can have? <laughs> Let's make a deal first. Oh, deal. It, well, we'll we'll do our own research and do our own thinking, but we can't just be giving out parasites to others like this. I'm trying to expand your 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 uh, empire, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's so hard to believe. So I don't know whether to have you roll a deception <laughs> or a persuasion <laughs> check. I'm just, I just need you to roll something. <laughs> roll something. I mean, it's the same thing. So I'll just roll it. Are you lying? I need. I want to know if you're lying though. Okay. Is Oleg lying here? I'm not sure. I don't think Oleg's convinced one way or another. I feel like Oleg's like that'd be a good way to control her. Like, who needs all this plan if at the end of it we could just give her an earworm and have her come in? Uh and like who needs the rest of this investigation if at the end of the day I can just be like and smack one in her ear. This feels uh, like giving yourself the Black Plague to drive out your case of the flu. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, that's exactly what it seems. Uh, I, mean, I would be giving them a very powerful asset. I think Oleg's like, 
either I can study one of these things, right, and figure out more. Hey, do, them... do what Oleg would do. Do what Oleg would do. I mean, that's, this is what Oleg yeah. is thinking. And yeah. uh, Oleg the whole time has been thinking about, like, it'd be cool to study one. Also, maybe it might be helpful for the investigation. <laughs> also, like, these guys are creepy. Um, yeah, Toza says that, uh, you know, the power of the Overmind can warp and uh, misshape the thoughts and memories and minds of others. So either you can take control of her or control the people in charge of the investigation. I rolled a dirty 20, by the way, on my something, <laughs> persuasion, deception, yeah. whatever it may be. I, I think Oleg's not even convinced at this point of what, he, what he's planning okay. on doing. But... but yes, the Overmind's magic could definitely accomplish something like that. Okay. And are these sending like a signal like how are these linked i know this conversation like ended five times but uh, <laughs> it's the midwest goodbye it's the del yeah. goodbye yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> um so uh he says um so as though uh how sharn is placed over a magical manifest zone connected to the other planes and other planets sort of like that we uh, the signals travel on on various uh arcane if you will arcane connections through the air or similar maybe uh, fungi and its communication spores stuff stuff like that that's super cool I it really is like that. it is very cool a uh cool i mean is there a way for me to actually as a question is there a way for me to meet the overmind not now no unless you no. want to travel all the way out of sharn to another country and find a an entry point and travel your way through the mines and tunnels and well you said you were going into the overmind's world right or into the overmind's realm so you go all the way there to speak to him but i have magic to take me where i need to go right magic yes do you want to teach me this magic is that possible maybe uh, we could go together it's just I a simple know. plane shifting spell but because it's oh. through my own um mental power i can't bring someone else simple simple plane shifting spell yeah i i know those things Yes. Um, it's a basic magic. Rudimentary. Might as well be a cantrip nowadays, am I right? Uh -huh. Yeah, super right. You can do that? <laughs> yeah. You're getting paid? Thinking of how high level magic plane shift is, and you're like, uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, okay, cool. So, what is like cool, crazy magic that you know then? I just. Yeah. Crazy magic. Uh, and you could too. Just with making the right connections and devoting yourself to the Overmind, you can possess such abilities. That's it? Yes. This feels like uh, one of those uh, info commercials, you know? <laughs> For only nineteen ninety five a month, you can get amazing power <laughs> from the Overmind. <laughs> well, no, of course, if you'll need to you know, destroy the wards and allow the Overmind's full presence to exist here in Sharn and all that. Oh, like okay. multi-level marketing scheme. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, okay. Uh, you didn't answer my other question, though. Like, what's the most powerful thing? Like, if you... What's the craziest magic you've seen that you can... That I, I have seen that I can do. That you um, can do, yes. Um, as a sort of patron of you and the other um, faithful Delkir uh, patrons here in Sean, um, I've developed some unique abilities with you all, such as communicating to you and, um, uh, making suggestions without uttering a word. Um, something that I can do, and I can actually allow you to do it too for a moment if you wish. Um, like I said, changing the form of someone else into a better, powerful creature. 
Um, okay. And are there other uh, like-minded followers I can talk to? Any of the ones that you shooed from your house? Oh, them. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Wait, but they don't know, do they? They, I mean, when I've talked to them before, they've just kind of been like... Uh, that was know. to maintain the, a little bit of a facade. Oh, so all of those people know that they are connected with the... Uh, yes, with, the a bit, with a bit of uh, mental maneuvering, yes. What? I'm, I'm sorry, what? With a little bit of mental maneuvering? Yeah, so just how I gave you the ability to issue simple commands to them... Um, uh, all I have to do, it's like, um, putting your finger over a spigot. And just let the water f run freely and they'll, they'll know everything. Oh, but they don't innately know about the fact that they are connected to the Overmind. Not necessarily, no. So we, there's not any other free-minded lovers of the Delkiar than myself? No. Cool. Good to know. Uh, I think I had one other question, but I'm leaving you here later here a little bit. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, this is all very cool. Very cool. Uh, I don't think I have anything else currently. Well. Um, are you sure? Sure. I don't know. I mean, you know, oh, uh, can you always read my mind? Is that something uh, that you can always do? Yes, yes. Oh, just always? Yes, and I can typically also perceive what you are hearing and seeing as well. Is that like an active thing, or is that like something that you have to like... Uh, fairly, fairly active thing. I kind of just tune in every once in a while. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Thanks. Uh, I, to be perfectly honest, so far your investigation has been thrilling. It has been very interesting. You went to jail? That was what you were done for. That was for. really cool. That was good. Uh, yeah, thank you for helping me there, yeah, actually. It's actually... That's kind of how I got involved. I was a little worried you were going to get in jail. And it's not very often, you know, if you go see a play or something, you don't necessarily get to interact with the story. But I, you know, this way I got a chance to make sure that you were, you got out. Was that enjoyable? Is that your hobby? What is your hobby? Is this your hobby? Oh, mutating creatures into other creatures. Well, that's pretty cool. If you want to show me inventions at some point, I'd be thrilled, obviously. Um, okay, well, this has been nice. Yeah. If you, want to, if you want me to visit your home, if you want to send me your address or something, I can possibly send, go into your home on a bed at some point. That'd be cool. Uh, no, that would probably just be a terrible experience. Why? It, I mean, it, it's just seeming to set a precedent, so... I, I, I guess that's... Just next time you're out that way uh, near the Roar Holds or anything, you can come visit. Or if you uh, destroy those protective wards down in Old Charm, that could see where we live immediately. Sure. Uh, okay. That sounds cool. Thanks. Um, I guess I'll talk to you later then. Is this, I don't know how to sign off to somebody who broke into my home. Yes. Um, uh, so he uh, shakes your hand, says, you know, pleasure finally meeting you. Uh, shakes very in hand and said, nice to meet you as well. Uh, good luck with the rest of your semester. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry to hear about your uh, advisor and all that stuff. Um, and walks over uh, to Spike and says, oh, congratulations on the, uh, the young lady. Congratulations on the date. Yeah, by the way, it's very weird. We just had the same exact interaction with somebody who was stalking us, by the way. This whole thing is very weird. I oh, that's right. Yeah. You don't actually know them. That's that's right. Um, Spike, great to meet you. Or is it pronounced Spark? Spark. He's... <laughs> Do they have... <laughs> Go ahead, Spike. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I... Listen, this is a this is a very new experience for me. Uh, I don't really know how to handle it at the moment. I'm kind of having a little bit of an existential crisis. <laughs> I just found that if you can uh, shift a different plane and that there's other dimensions or stuff like that, 
Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you, uh, the whole tentacle beard thing, I thought that was just like an accessory thing that Oleg was wearing. I did not realize that those were actual tentacles. But Oh, uh, yeah, uh, and you watch as... Um, it wasn't an accessory. See, it wasn't. <laughs> it's not an accessory. Sucks. Um, Otoza, uh, like, see, he's like, oh, yes, and he raises up his hand, like, waves his fingers, like, just in a wave, and the tentacles around Oleg's beard kind of do the same. They, like, unfurl, raise up, wave, and then go back down. Oh, I right. didn't know that. I was just being doing this because I thought that it was cool. But honestly, that oh no, that's a, it's a, li a living creature, it's <gasps> symbiote. Oh, just like your uh, and uh, turns his hand up, and your turret like. <laughs> yeah, I knew out. that was living, but the beard thing, I, I don't mm. have to feed this thing. No, oh. maybe it's like feeding off of you or something. Is it feeding off of me? No, of course not. That was insight check. <laughs> Make an insight <laughs> check. I got a 15. <laughs> uh, he's lying a little bit. <laughs> I don't... What the fuck? Uh, okay, so... How else do you think you stay so slim? Mm -hmm. I don't eat that much. I don't. Well, oh, okay, I don't like that face. All right, we're gonna. All right. Well. Well, I will yes. see you all uh, some other time. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. Thank you. Um. And can you? All right. Okay. And those other people, like, I'm just gonna. They're they're fine, right? They will they will live their normal lives, and I can just call them over whenever, right? Yes. That's, yes. That's the deal. Okay. They'll live their normal lives unless you don't want them to. Oh, I, lo I love that. That's great. Thanks. All right. Oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, bye. Great. Um, walks over to one of the doors, closes it, and you feel a whoosh of not necessarily cold air, but almost like vacuous air. Like every bit of moisture, oxygen, warmth, uh, cold, everything in the air just <laughs> is sucked out for a second. All the candles and torches and lanterns in here dim for a moment and come back. Um and everything goes back to normal. I'll open up the door. Gone. And you see that your servants, your actual servants, still wearing the black robes, walk in. Yeah. Great to see you, Master Kundrak. Um, hope the tea and meal were sufficient. Yes, of course. Uh, oh, did he ask you to wear the black cloak? Where the, why did you have this whole ceremonious thing, by the way? Oh! kind of forgot about it uh he arrived and said uh to get changed to something a little bit more comfortable uh they'd be up in the dresser drawers upstairs and there they were oh cool that's cool <laughs> oh, cool um there might be some for you too they're very comfy are they? they're light and breezy and one of the servants he's like yeah i didn't have to wear any underwear out of them they're really got some good aeration that's, that's real cool i'm your boss by the way uh, it's real nice to, I mean, like, I, I like you a lot. I don't want to hear about you not having on the wear on. Um, I, I, okay, well, I'm going to go upstairs and grab a, a cloak, see how comfortable it is. Um, did he give me an earworm? He didn't give me an earworm. He did not, no. Oh, okay, that asshole. Um, uh, I'm going to, like, <laughs> circle around behind the servant, and I'm going to message Oleg and just be like, is there anywhere we can talk in this house without servants? And I'll just message back. He can hear everything I hear and see everything I can see. I th I message back. I think I might be able to do something about that, if only temporarily. Okay, I love that. Yeah, um, I can just tell them to go the fuck away. <laughs> Yeah, I eventually said my like, servants. Says that out loud. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. I did, yeah. yeah. Just go the fuck away. Oleg, doesn't, Oleg does not whisper, like, in his yeah. head very much. He literally just pretty much shouts. <laughs> I love it. And they'll go, yeah, of course, we'll start uh, cleaning up the dining room. And they walk into the other room, close the door, and start your dishes shuffling. Cool. I um, wait a few seconds as they leave the room. Then I go over to Oleg and start reciting some incantations and having 
the, the uh, kind of green miasma of crackling arcane energy in my hand. I cast non-detection on the Oleg. Ayo! Finally, a use for that spell. I don't know what that is. <laughs> non-detection is a third level wizard spell that for the duration, eight hours, you hide a target that you touch from divination magic. The target can be a willing creature or a place no larger than 10 feet in dimension. The target can't be targeted by any divination magic or perceived through magical scrying sensors. Thanks. At which point, I grab you by the collar with my <laughs> minus three strength and just say, what the fuck have you gotten yourself into? I mean, I just like really cool magic, I gotta be honest. Oh, look, if I could sweat, I'd be sweating bullets right now. All uh -huh. right. Thank you! A voice of reason! I don't know what the hell in this was. Um, I mean, I don't... It's a mind flare at your table! Yeah, as it, as I'm sitting, as I'm talking to you, it's it is becoming a little bit. Is it, is it and you see Oleg like, kind of sit down, uh, and kind of just like lean, lean on his chair a little bit, and he goes, "I mean, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely, yeah, a lot." Mm -hmm. I I knew you you dabbled in in Tokyo tech. I'm living proof of that. An agent of the Overmind was sitting at your dining room table. Yeah, it sounded like he was pretty powerful, too. He cast a plane shift spell and said it was like a cantrip. <laughs> I don't know if he was being a dick, but... Yeah, I don't... Later, can we talk about uh, these other planes? I didn't know that there was <laughs> one. one. Um, I mean, I can, I can explain I mean, it to you sometime, or I. Not know, right now, I just, I just feel like someone to talk to me. <laughs> I, what else am I missing out on? I, I, <laughs> I can't handle all of this right now. <laughs> um, it is quite late. I do appreciate y'all helping me kick out the people. I am, in retrospect, <laughs> very. Seems... This seems the least of your problems. Oh, your no. tenant situation. No, the tenant situation was the thing that was weighing on me the most. I have to be honest. It was. It's. It really is quite a heft on off my shoulders. I. You do not understand how much my space means to me. Having servants, that's fine. Uh, knowing that I'm being caught on camera at all times seems a little weird. I kind of curious how many times. Never mind. Um, I... Oh, God. Uh... Why would you put that out there? <laughs> it just... It just seems like a question. Um, but, you know... I am curious how many times people scry... On people. Also, I, how do I... Scrying is relatively high-level magic, but not when you're on a... An overmind? The I mean... overmind? The guy himself was not the overmind that was sitting. In I know house. that, but as I understand it, they're all connected in, uh, in a sort of, I mean, almost like a fungal network. It's this is a problem I want to address, but I definitely. I mean, you have to die tomorrow, or fake die, or fake get hurt. Yes, f fake. We came down on fake die. Let's remember. Or that. fake get hurt. Yes, yeah. fake get hurt. Well, Real yeah, in church, fake. Anyway, well, I got. I need to. I need to know. Um, were they the bad guys, or are are they bad guys? Should I? I don't. You know, I have to be honest. I think it's a little bit of yes. Mm -hmm. Mostly a, li yes. a little bit. Little bit. A little bit. All Look, right. I. Part of me is understanding, that. There's a lot of complication in this whole thing. Oh, like these aren't Cornish immigrants here just trying to make a life. They're trying <laughs> to put those brain worms in all of us. Yeah, yeah but they didn't. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. He was really quick about it too. Like we, he, we showed up and he just had them in his hand, ready to go. I did ask if he brought anything. I guess he just figured he did bring his gifts out first. 
I just prefer not to have anything in my ear. I don't even have I, ears, I, but I, I prefer agree. not to have it in there. I yeah, I am curious how it'd work with a a, a warforged. Well, let's not find out. Let's just yeah. not. I mean, out. he didn't give me one to experiment on, so. I, okay. I, okay. You know. Um. I, now, question. All right. Look. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. I, I think that. This is obviously not the greatest of situations. Mm-hmm. Um, and I... Yep. Yeah. You really do have a gift for understatement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like we'll say, look, I think that I really want to experiment on more things. And I think that the cooperation of people in Delkir... Stop shaking. Um, I think that the cooperation of people in Delkir can be quite a beneficial relationship. I do think that the cooperation they are trying to have is not quite the cooperation, the relationship that I would want. Uh, what, what of enslavement? That's... Uh, we're... Uh, okay, we're officially recognizing that as bad, right? Yes. Okay. 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 Good. Yeah, good. Right. Now, I'm I'm going to say a word to you right now, <laughs> okay. and you tell me if you can imagine a way this thing would coexist with us without enslavement. Sure. Overmind. <laughs> okay. Well, what if the overmind was was like a tenant to a hotel or something? Legitimately, though, maybe he's like a mayor. He's like overmind over his like little layer, right? His little. I mean, like the overmind about... is not a public official. <laughs> do we do we know Logan if goblins are always this way? And like, as far as we know, in Eberron, like it is not different than or Sharn is not different than Eberron as a whole with how goblins are, right? And orcs. Um. Could you explain your question? Yeah, my question is... A little differently. Um, yeah, my question is mostly, are goblins and orcs, uh, like, universally in the Eb world of Eberron, um, treated as equals-ish? Yes. Okay. So, Oleg would not know of other ways that elves or goblins or orcs are like uh, treated as monsters what are treated as monsters sorry goblins and orcs uh no not treated as monsters sometimes okay. uh, you know depending on the community they might have people especially because um um Actually, I'll let you determine this if you do your research about the relationship between orcs, goblins, and Delkir. Uh, That's a little bit different. Okay. I will definitely be researching tonight in game um, the relationship of Delkir and people, Delkir and orcs, Delkir and every kind of like any kind of interaction with Delkir and something. I will be doing that and i'll just what time are we supposed to have that meeting tomorrow varian uh, late afternoon late afternoon okay well i can just have a mid i can just sleep until like noon and stay <laughs> up tonight and do some research i mean i i any, really anything you want to do that you don't want him to see do it in the next eight hours. Oh. Interesting. Yes. It's it's a very niche kind of magical effect, but a powerful one nonetheless. I don't have to concentrate on it. And you're free of their gaze for, for eight hours. Are we sure future. that that works? I don't know. It's It's... <laughs> It's not the most powerful of spells, and 
I don't know precisely what the Overmind is capable of. If, so, but... Do you, do you know of anything that can transform a creature into another creature permanently? Permanently? I mean... Or is it a temporary thing he was thinking about, do you think? He said to I mean, make it the best saw, solution. You saw what I did with Gav. I mean, I... I made it into a toad. Uh, that... Yeah. Fairly high level magic in and of itself, but it only lasts for an hour. There, there are more powerful versions of the spell which allow the transition to to be permanent. But I mean, we're talking about uh, like arc mage level of magic there. Sure. All right. Um. Okay. So. <clears throat> I think that it is a possibility for, for us to learn from them and for them to have their own society. They already have a society, they're just taking over people for no reason. And I think that it's... I, don't, I mean, there has to be a way. Like, we, we have so many different types of people in this city. And I just had, there has to be a way, right? Especially if they have no conflict, like he says they, if they do. Well, they have no conflict because they're all controlled by one mind. I mean, if that's the case, then... I don't know. Why can they not... I uh, mean, uh, like, please tell me you're not considering this. Why not? Why should they not have their own little ward and live on their own little area? Because... Okay... Look, don't uh, don't accuse me of being prejudiced. If if they in some way could renounce the you know psychological enslavement and the uh, I mean you know what was under the tentacles, right? A, no. a beak for boring through skulls and sucking out brains. I have two guns on my back. <laughs> I don't see what that has to do with what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm if, they could that... renounce, if they could renounce the enslavement and the brain eating, sure, B build uh, uh, build a ward to them. Um, I, uh, so you agree? I... It seems like a good idea, yes? Yeah, but I mean, I have I invented gun, or I did not. I invented these guns, right? So yeah, I mean they're very much similar to other people's schemes, but uh, you and I are. He was literally made for war. And he is surviving with around us without constantly trying to kill us. I think what he's trying to say, uh, to put it a little bit more bluntly, is that if they weren't so uh, hell-bent on total and complete the domination, then maybe it'll work out. Yep. That's, that's it. My death. I mean, that was my conversation I had with him, no? I was hoping that they would say, I mean, we'll think about the idea of not taking over everything. It seems as, I mean, unless we can get a, see, uh, when it comes to world domination, a hey, we'll think about it. It's not really that good of an answer. <laughs> it, we we kind of need like a, like a, like a yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. Firm, a firm. <laughs> yes. We will not dominate the world. That's, yeah. That's. That is my standard for them being cool here. Okay. Is, so am, am I the thing. crazy or is that, is that and, reasonable? Uh, that is understandable. My problem is that I think that people, it is hard to get someone to agree to something that they disagree with immediately. You have to plant the idea. You have to slowly reach the point where they understand and accept it part of it might be threats sometimes i put a gun to people and they understand the the idea after a while but uh, yeah, you have to be able to have the conversation first right why are so, you uh, making sense right now it's we you, there is no way for huh. someone who is a hard no to get to a hard yes real quick you know so it sounds like you're going to have to have a conversation with them to get them into a hard yes. 
that way yes. they don't do world domination. Right? Yeah, this is... Yeah, are, are you agreeing that they shouldn't I mean, dominate the world? Yes, of course. I don't think that they should... I mean, that was not... At one point in that conversation, did I think that they... Did I agree with them saying that they should take over the world? Okay, fair okay. enough. Fair enough. Okay. So, I definitely think that we should find a way to have a conversation with them. I understand that we are talking to something that is very powerful, and this is why I did not try to shoot it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I noticed, Spike, that you did not threaten it at any point. I... I'm gonna be honest with you. I was kind of freaked out. I, I, nah, I, listen, I, I'm not the one to say that I was scared or anything, but your boy was a little freaked out, alright? And also... I kind of knew this was your house. This was your freaky deaky situation. I didn't want to get involved too heavily. And I also, with the way that he kind of just commanded all of them servants, non servants, whatever, to just leave your house and they just did it like that, that's some power. That's true. I kind of like that. I'm going to be honest. Being able to just tell people to, like, I don't know if we could just solve this investigation by telling her to, like, Stop. That'd be kind of nice. That, that would be kind of nice, yeah. I mean, Is I, that... I get that. Y yes. Yes, I get that. Um, can, can, can we agree? World domination, bad. Um, erasing <laughs> free will. Erasing free will, also bad? You're, you're hesitating. <laughs> I am hesitating. This They do have interesting motives i don't look the whole no wars thing is definitely something uh, sharn is a piece of shit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we know this <laughs> i mean <laughs> so the idea if you looked at sharn and you had the power to change it even if that power was not agreeable for people. If you had a chance to change your Sharn, <laughs> would you? <laughs> Boo. Boo. Damn um, it. So, uh, look, I'm not saying that their, mo like their actions are, in, are the best, right? But they have a means to change what they see as a problem. And Free they're... Will. Killing, theft... Crime? Yeah, those are regrettable, surely, but exercises of free will. You just had someone who tried to kill, who was planning to kill you. Their argument is that there will be no way that anybody would do that for you. Yes, and the fact that somebody tried to kill me and I'm still on the side I'm on should give you pause. I'm just saying that, uh, yes, their motives are... I'm just saying that maybe their process is bad. But they have interesting motives. They... Yes, they want to take over, but... It's a very interesting... It's an interesting concept. <laughs> I don't... I don't think that it is... Good to take away free will. I, I definitely agree okay. with that. That okay. is, that's good. That's that's good. Good. Good start. Good start. It took you a while to say that, but okay. I'm glad we got there. Yeah, I and you heard me whenever we were talking to him. I did not want that to be the option, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. but I, I had issues trying to argue against his thought process of uh, improving society in a way that would make it so I wouldn't have to run around and threaten people to kill them. And I don't see much difference into what I'm doing and what they're doing sometimes. And to be honest, I force people with guns to do what I want them to do. What I want them to do. You threaten people with guns. They still have a choice. They have a choice to die. They do have, but they have a choice. Okay. Yep. That That's yep. the important part. I, I, have the I, choice I, to die. I was, yeah, I, 
Look, Spike, I've been on board with you like 99% of the time <laughs> up until now. I, I, I feel like if if you put a gun to somebody's head and you're like, hey, uh, uh, give me your money or I shoot you in the head, that's not much of a choice. Yeah, I right. mean, by the strictest definition, yes, you've given them one, but the, the alternative is death. So, so, so you, my see, point... you see the problem here. Yeah, so my point is what I'm doing... Okay, you don't see the problem it's still a choice but go ahead I, uh, you know maybe i they offer an ethics class at morgrave maybe you, could, <laughs> you guys could audit it uh i'll, I'll try i could talk to the professor yeah and what's i mean Very what does the professor know about shooting that. people um i i could ask uh professor avison i don't think he's ever shot somebody um, mm -hmm. Do you think he's ever been in a life and death situation? Uh, I sure could ask. I'm going to go ahead and venture to say no. So, at this point, <laughs> you all here, probably in this little side room you've sequestered yourself off to to have this conversation, uh, you hear from probably the foyer uh, one of the uh, clocks in the estate probably, you know, carved with all sorts of uh, tentacled uh, designs, but also bearing the colors of House Kundarak. Um, how it chimes at each hour, it chimes once for right. 1 a.m. Um, so for Oleg to get a long rest to be over there at Morgrave by late afternoon, um, you'll probably need to go to bed by like 4 or 5 o'clock. Uh, so I, yeah, I yeah. definitely need to go ahead and start researching and the uh, overmind of sorts is telling me to stop talking. So, um, <laughs> well, it's just to give you enough time to research. You can keep talking yeah. if you want. Well, no, it's fine. I definitely, I think that we should talk it over with everybody. I don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's late. We've got. Uh, an assassination to carry out tomorrow. Um, we should probably get some sleep. Um, uh, Spike. Oh yeah, I need to drive you. you. I need to drive you to your home, right? Uh, uh, I, are you gonna drive? I can just drive him. Okay. <laughs> Not a big deal. Okay. God, I got like very visceral high school like flashbacks of like who can yeah. me ride home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. We can talk about this at another time. I have eight hours, you said? Uh, well, if you need to go to bed by, like, we'll say five o'clock, so that way you can wake up by 1 p.m., uh, you would have about four hours to uh, research. Okay, and I'll, Let's I'll say, say we're to doing Varian, the thing at 3, 3.30 tomorrow. Sure. I still want to make sure I'm ready and have my uh, my slow morning. <laughs> of course. Uh, like I always have. Breakfast, coffee, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll say to Varian, look, is there anything in particular that I need to research while I am not, or that I need to do while I'm not being watched by the Overmind? I would advise you to look, to read, uh, perhaps. Uh, I know you've, you, you have certainly tinkered, um, you, you know, in your capacity as an artificer uh, um, with the Okia tech. And whatnot. I would, I would advise you to maybe read up on the history a little bit. Um, you I mean, know, they would be happy to watch that happen. But like, okay, well, is there anything you, anything you've been working on, or you want to work on that they, you don't want them to know about? They already know about everything I'm working on. So, all right. Well, fuck it then. Okay. All right. We're on. Do agreement. anything you don't want them to see. I. I'm not gonna get into it. Um, okay. Just Thanks. remember, Oleg, world domination is a bad thing. Thank All you, right. I I like this conversation. I agreed with that from the very beginning. Thank you for yeah. this ethics lesson. Okay. Yes, you're you're my friend. I care about you. Um, please don't sell us out to a hive mind. Uh, good. I I will not. I care about you more than. Uh, everybody else except for myself. 
and get that in writing. <laughs> so thank you. Um, try try to pull on that when I almost <laughs> die tomorrow. Maybe maybe cry a little. Bit. I, I don't know. Really sell I, it. <laughs> in like a in like a little bout of jealousy, I'm just like, all right, come on, Varian, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Spike, I care about you very much. No, no, you've already said it. Okay, well, um, thank you very much again. Thank you very much for coming. I don't know what I would do without you all. Glad you're not turned into a squid right. man or whatever it was. I echo Spike's sentiments. Um, I'm I'm glad we could help. Um, after we take down this um mastermind murderer, um, perhaps. We can, uh, we can talk about your stuff more, and you know, Spike, you've still got that arm that talks to you, so I, I haven't forgotten about that. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't implant that part, by the way. That's not part of the Overmind thing, I, as far as I know. Yeah. It might be, but probably not. I look uh, at my hand, just. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, let's 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 uh, go to sleep. I'm sure. Call it a night. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, Donovan. Uh, is having a nice night with his family, probably asleep by now, so. <laughs> oh, yes. And when Spike, Varian, and you go outside, all, like, 40 people that were told to leave his house are just wandering aimlessly around the yard, and they're like, how do you think it's going in there? It's getting kind of chilly out here. And so, like, they, they listened and they left his house, but they've just lingered outside. I I just kind of smile nervously and nod at them <laughs> as we pass. Just like, oh, good night, all. Oh, good night, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just, just like, I'm just like, let's get the fuck out of here. Like, you don't say anything. To it? Okay. Oh, well, like you'll probably see is like they open the door to let them out. Okay. The forty yeah. people standing outside. And yeah. I'll say, uh, I'll say, uh, what? go home. Sounds good. Have a nice night. And they all leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man. So, um, uh, with that, any final thoughts from Spike and Varian while <laughs> Barry gets dropped <laughs> off? <laughs> Does he just like? Uh, do you do you pull out your motorcycle? Yeah. So I'm just like <laughs> around you on the way back, and as like the wind is flapping against my face, I'm just like, if. If some sort of tentacly or otherwise monstrous <laughs> thing comes to talk to you about the arm thing, please let me know. I'm like, uh, will do. Cool. I'm like, it's okay. It, just put your head. Don't. Yeah, the I wind's just... like hitting your face. Just like put your head. All right. <laughs> you know what? You do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, like, it's going like 45 miles an hour and it's like, <laughs> um, so uh, that gets done Oleg you stay up through the night do some research and eventually go to sleep um, and with that we'll take a quick couple minute break to debrief grab refills use the restroom and all that good stuff. yeah cool I get back and I just slam like half a bottle of Z-Quil and I'm just like I, I need this <laughs> I like that it's not like alcohol or anything. It's just like, yeah. oh man, <laughs> sleeping aids. Alrighty, so let's take a couple minute break and we'll come back and um, do a little bit more, uh, do a little bit more stuff through the night and then get on with the the master plan. Woo! Hell yeah. Good stuff. Thanks All for right. hanging in with those yes. folks. Thanks for hanging in, Jacob. All right. Yes. Well, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be right, right back. Bud. 